In this video, I'm going to show you how you can do the CAM project. This is project 4.2 in chapter 4. The first step asks us to open up the GeoQuick drawing that we just created in project 4.1. So we're going to do two drawings in one file. Now it says to activate the model tab before beginning this step. We're already in the model tab. I'm going to move this to the side and show you. So we've already got the GeoQuick drawn in here. We're in the model tab. We know we're in the model tab because it's got that black background to it. So the first thing it wants us to do is draw two concentric circles. Concentric meaning they share the same center point. So draw two concentric per circles. They're going to each have a center point of 14 comma 11. That's an absolute coordinate coming from 0, 0, the origin, over 14 on the x, up 11 on the y. We discussed in the last video that circles are always given in diameters and not radius. So if you are working in AutoCAD, you want to make sure not to choose the center radius option. You want to choose the center diameter option. If you choose center radius, make sure that you force it to ask you for a diameter. Otherwise, your circles are going to be twice as big as they need to be. So I'll choose circle command with the diameter. Now it's asking for the center point. This is where we're going to type in our absolute coordinate. 14 comma 11, enter. Now it's asking us for the diameter of this circle. We've got two different circles to do. One has a 6 inch diameter and one has a diameter of 5.33. It does not matter what you do first. So let's do 5.33. Press enter when you're done. If your circle looks bigger than this, if it's hanging out of this magenta rectangle, you accidentally did a radius instead of a diameter. So make sure your circle looks about this size. Start the circle command again. I can either type in a new center point, which is 14 comma 11, or since I have one that's already using that center point, I can just snap to the center O snap. The way that we get the center O snap is to hover right next to kind of the arc, the curvature, the circle itself. So click right here. This time, this one, the other one was 5.33, so I'll make this one a diameter of six. Enter, and that's what yours should look like. Let's go ahead and add a center line to this. Quick and easy way to do a center line. There's two different ways to do it. You can do the dimension pull down, click on the center mark, and then you click on the largest of the two circles, or I'm gonna U enter to undo. You can also go to annotate, center mark, and again, same thing, just click on it. Those center marks look different. This is the one that you see, I believe, in the book. So we've got a center mark, two concentric circles. Now what we're going to do, I'm going to zoom into this. Remember the zoom command. I can roll my mouse, that IntelliMouse wheel. I'm going to roll it up, bring it down, looks good. I'm going to draw the circle over here, and that circle is going to be either at the quadrant of this larger circle or at the intersection of the larger circle and that center mark. Same place. It's exactly the same place. Whichever one you snap to, it'll be the same thing. So we'll go over here. This time we're going to draw a two inch diameter circle. Starting here, mine just happened to snap to intersection. You could snap to quadrant as well. It's intersecting at the quadrant. Once a diameter, two. Looks good. Now we're going to use that circle and we're going to do an array. We're going to do a polar array. Polar arrays go in a circle, whereas rectangular arrays have rows and columns. So we're going to pull down where it says array here. You click on that little arrow. It was defaulting to a rectangular array because that's what we did in the GeoQuick. This time I'll say polar array. Select the circle. Just look, let AutoCAD prompt you through what it's looking for. Select the circle. When you're done selecting the objects, you have to press enter. Now it says specify the center point of the array. That's not the center of this circle, it's the center around which you want all of those circles to go. So we want these circles to go in a big circle. So we will choose the center here. 
Now it pops up and it wants to know how many objects do we want to have in that array? How, how much do we want to fill? What's the distance between? We're really going to leave these at the defaults. We want six items and we want it to fill up 360 degrees, a full circle. So it's kind of calculating that it's going to be 60 degrees between each one automatically. We talked before in the last video, the GeoQuick video, about this option here being associative. Associative, what that's going to do is when I come back to the drawing, each of those circles, instead of being individual independent circles, they're going to be associated with each other into a polar array. When you do that, it makes it very difficult to trim those circles as needed and we're going to need to trim the circles in the next step. So what we need to do here is uncheck associative and we can come back and this way now when I click on it everything is individual circles as opposed to I'm going to pan over here. Remember these circles were associative so I click on one circle everything highlights and it goes right up to the array ribbon that contextual ribbon. If you forget to do this where you tell it that it needs to be uh, or uncheck the option that says associative, I'm going to undo a couple of times and I'll just redo that array. So array, select the circle, press enter, select the center point. If I forget to uncheck associative here and I close the array, so now when I click on it, everything highlights at once. One thing that you can do is come back to the home ribbon and you can just explode it. Exploding an associative array just breaks it into the individual objects. So we've got the individual circles here. However you get to it, it's fine. The next thing we need to do is erase and trim. So we're going to erase this large diameter circle. We just needed that to figure out where to put these little circles. So I'll click on that. A couple of ways you can erase. I can click on the object and click on the eraser. I can click on the object and press the delete key on my keyboard. There's no right or wrong way, but we do want to make sure to delete the circle before we come in here and trim. Now we're going to start the trim command. Remember trim looks like a little pair of scissors next to it. You can also type TR enter for trim. When you start that trim command, you want to press enter. What pressing enter does is it makes everything a cutting edge. So I'll click here. Remember it gives you a little, a little highlight of what it's about to happen. A little X and it kind of grays out what's going to go away. So click here, here, just come through here. You can even, if you want to, just draw a little window around the stuff that you want. Okay, I've got my trim command looking good. Press enter when you're done. The next step is to create a slot. So we're going to make a slot that goes right through here. So the first step of that, we have to get a circle in here to create that slot. So we'll do another circle command. Same center point. Once the diameter, we're going to type in 2.67. Now that we've got that circle, that circle was just to help us figure out where to get this circle. So we're going to actually, this is the one we really need, is the slot itself. So this one has a diameter 0.325. I'm going to pan down a little bit here. Now what we're going to do is just go ahead and draw some lines. I don't think that circle is a 0.325. That's a 0.325 radius. Ooh, you know what happened? I pressed enter to repeat the circle command. And when you do that, it does the circle with the radius option. I thought that looked too big. So let's do circle with a diameter of 0.325. Yes, that looks much better. Now we're going to draw a line and we're going to use just coming straight up. You know, I don't have my quadrant O snap turned on, so let's come down here and I'm going to put a little check mark next to quadrant. Now I can snap to the quadrant, looks like a little diamond, 
And I'm just going to turn on my ortho to make sure that I'm drawing a perfectly straight line. You don't want your lines to be off at all here. The easiest way to turn on ortho is to hit F8. You can also click on this icon right here to turn it on. F8 will do it though. And we can just drag it up any distance. It's going to be hard to get it exactly where we need it. So just any distance, press enter to end that command. Start it again. Any distance, press enter. I say any distance because you can always come back and trim. So trim, press enter, click here, click here. I'm going to go ahead and trim the rest of this out, even here and here. This is the slot that I'm going to array next. So I'll start my polar array command and I'm going to select this arc this line and this line. If you had not trimmed it out, that won't be an arc, it'll be two circles. It's fine, whichever way you do it. If you trim it first, that's just less trimming that you'll have to do later. Press enter when you've selected your objects. It wants the center point around which those arcs, that arc and those lines are gonna array. And again, it defaults to having six and that's exactly what we need. So we really don't have to do anything different here. We'll uncheck the option that says associative, close the array, looks good. The next step that we need to do is we're going to erase this circle now. That circle was only there to help us figure out where that slot was going to be. So we'll go ahead and erase that one. So I select it, I'm pressing delete on my keyboard. If you had not already trimmed, these would be circles. So you would need to go into each one of those circles and trim. I was a little bit sneaky and did it ahead of time. So I'll start the trim command, press enter, and I'm just gonna click here, here. These are slots, so they need to be able to go all the way through. There we go, looks good. Press enter when I'm done with the trim command. The next step is we need to add the hub to the cam, so we're going to draw two more concentric circles. We are going to be experts at drawing concentric circles by the end of this. So we've got circle and same center point. And it tells us one of them has a diameter of 1.67. Do another circle. The other one has a diameter of 1. 1. Enter. So we've got two more circles in here. Now that we've got the hub, we want to add a keyway. So a little, it's going to be that little slot that you see right up here. I'll show you how I do the keyway. I always draw it off to the side and then I move it into place when I need it. So add the keyway. It's 0.25 wide by 0.15 tall. I'm just going to draw a rectangle. So here's a rectangle. Click anywhere to start. I just always draw it off to the side. Do 0.25, comma, 0.15, enter. I have my little keyway here. I'm going to go to my O snaps and see if I have. There's an O snap that showed up a few years ago, a couple of releases ago, called Geometric Center. I'm going to check that one. This is a cool one. I'm going to do the move command. I'm going to select the object that I want. So selecting that rectangle, press enter. Now for the base point, normally you could click at the end point or the midpoint, but you see that little asterisk in the middle? That's the geometric center. It's just right smack in the middle of that rectangle. So I'm gonna pick that up as my base point. And then I'm gonna to snap to the top quadrant. I'm almost done. Now what I'm gonna do is move it again. Select the object, press enter. I'm going to select it by an endpoint and I'm going to move it to the intersection. So where that line was crossing that circle, because what I really needed was 0.15 up from the circle itself. Now that I've got it exactly where I need it, I'm going to explode to make this into four lines, not one object. Go ahead and get rid of this one. Press delete. And then I'll use my trim command. Remember, press enter when you start the trim command and just click here. 
depending on how your center line goes, if your center, if your center mark had kind of gone through that circle, you would have to trim this side and trim the other side. So you might have to trim it two times to get it, but you just need it to look like that. When you're done, you've got two different drawings here. We've got the GeoQuick and we've got the Cam. We do want to make sure that we have the font set to Arial. You do not have to dimension these. In chapter four, we're not talking about dimensioning.